Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. One of the questions I get asked a lot is, should I model the chamfers on my part or should I just do it in cam? And my answer is usually yes. Um, so let me explain that a little bit. So if the chamfer is going to have an aesthetic look, so meaning like how big the chamfer is, is going to make a, uh, a difference to the appearance of the part, or if the chamfer is required to be a functional part to make things fit together or the way it mechanically goes together, something like that, then I put the chamfers on the part. If I'm only, if my only intention were, were to put the chamfer on the part so I could deburr the part, then I'm not going to model that as a chamfer. I'm gonna do that inside of cam. Uh, and we're gonna take a look using this part at two ways that you can chamfer uh, on a part like this. So if you ever wanted to uh, pull up this part and follow along, you could go ahead and go to your data panel Go to your list of all your projects and you're going to find something called workshops and events. Inside of workshops, workshops and events is going to be an education folder. And inside of the education folder is going to be a CAM workshops. And the part that I'm working with is called 3D Advantage. Uh, so that's the part that I have open on the screen right now. So if we look at this part, most of the edges on this part uh, have square edges and there's the holes have a chamfer that's placed on them now there's a couple different ways we could do the the chamfers and the holes we could do that at the time of drilling or we could do as a second oper or secondary operation but we're going to look at doing this with uh, using the 2d contour functionality the rule of thumb is if we hit the 2d drop down we're going to see two tool paths that we can use to do this these chamfers one is called the 2d contour and the other one is called the 2D chamfer. And my rule of thumb is if the chamfer has been modeled like it has on these holes, you need to use the 2D contour to be able to create the tool path. If you try to use the 2D chamfer command, it will fail every time. Now there's a couple little tricks you can do to, to make this work out, but in my opinion, it's not worth the effort. Um, so if the chamfer has been modeled, just use the 2D contour option. If the chamfers haven't been modeled, we can use the 2D chamfer command, which I sort of consider the magic uh, chamfer tool path. And we'll take a look at why I look at it that way. So let's add some chamfers onto our part. So let's take a look at what happens if I were to grab a 2D chamfer and uh, I'm gonna go grab a tool inside of my library. I grab this tool number five, which is a quarter inch chamfer mill. And as I said, it won't work if I try to apply it to a line like this. So I'll just go ahead and run with the defaults. Let's set this to be, I don't know, we'll, uh, we'll just, go ahead and hit okay it won't matter anyway and what you'll see is you won't get a tool path and fusion will say it generated uh, very quickly no tool path so not very helpful but just note that uh, 2d chamfer only works on things that don't have the chamfer applied so how do we do those instead well i'm going to do a 2d contour and i'm going to go pick up that same tool that same tool number five the quarter inch chamfer mill and now i'm going to go grab the edges that i want to chamfer on the part so go grab the edges that I want to have. There we go. Now heights for me aren't critical for chamfers because the tip of the chamfer tool is being driven by the geometry that I select. So I don't worry about setting top heights and bottom heights when I'm doing chamfering. Let's go over to the passes tab <clears throat> on the passes tab and I should drag this out so you can see the labels better. So now we can see the labels for everything. You notice that Fusion has since that we're using a chamfer tool has given us chamfer options. So even if the chamfer wasn't modeled, you could still use 2D contour, although most of the time in that case, I think we're better off with, uh, with the 2D chamfer uh, option instead of 2D contour. So if we look, we have an ability to, to specify the chamfer width, but because our chamfer is already on there, we're gonna set the chamfer width to be zero. We're gonna let the software figure that out. And as you probably know, we don't like to cut with the very tip of a chamfer tool. We like to offset that tool a bit. So I'm just going to do a 0 0.08, 80,000 of an inch chamfer tip offset. It's going to push that uh, tip down and Fusion's going to do the trigonometry to keep the edge of the tool engaged in the machine, the chamfer that I want. And I'll go ahead and choose OK. And then we'll see that we get our little chamfer tool path uh, that we wanted to do. So there's how we could use the 2D, con uh, yeah, the 2D contour to create the chamfers on this part. We can also use the 2D chamfer command. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm gonna use 2D chamfer, same tool. This time in the geometry, let's go and select these edges right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab those edges. And then I wanna to go to the passes tab. Now here I could add a finishing overlap since this is a closed uh, circle. I should have done this on the 2D contour as well. I'm just gonna specify a 50,000 of an inch 
finishing overlap so it leads out 50,000 past where it let in. And now I'm gonna come here and set what I want my chamfer tip offset to be. So I'm gonna say 0 0.02, and then I'll do a, a chamfer clearance of, you know, say 0.08, something like that. And we're gonna talk about this chamfer clearance. This is the magic dialog box right here, but we're gonna wait till the next example. On this particular example, it won't really matter. Uh, Fusion's gonna go ahead and do what it needs to. So we'll hit OK, and there you can see Fusion creates our toolpath. If I were to simulate this, let me turn my stock off and turn um, all my toolpath on, I could just pick some point along there to move the tool. And now we look, we're cutting closer to the shoulder of the tool, which I like for the better surface footage. Um, and Fusion's figuring out how to do that 20,000 inch chamfer that it needs to do. So let's take a look at the magic part of this toolpath. The magic part is typically we wouldn't try to deburr an edge like this in cam because the center tip of the tool is going to follow the line and when the tool comes and gets to the very end of the line, half the tool is going to be embedded in this vertical wall and I'm going to have to do lots of math and things to kind of figure out how to make, how to make that not happen. Luckily, the 2D chamfer toolpath will pretty much automate this process for me. So let's go take a look at how I can do that. So I'm going to say 2D and chamfer, and I'm just gonna do one of these ledges for right now. I'm gonna use the same tool, but on the geometry, I'm gonna pick on this edge right here. That's the edge I wanna chamfer. And I'm gonna jump straight over into the passes tab. Now, I don't have any finishing overlap to worry about because it's just a single line. And I'm gonna tell Fusion that I wanna do a chamfer tip offset of 0 0.02. I know the height from the tip of the tool to the shoulder on a quarter of an inch, as long as it's a 45 degree angle, is going to be 0.125. So that's the maximum tip offset that I can do, not taking into account the chamfer width. So if I did 0.125 minus 0.02, that would give me a perfect chamfer tip offset amount of 0.105. I'm gonna use that for this example. I don't want you to use this when you're machining your parts. Oftentimes the tip of chamfer tools break off and that's sometimes why, you, well, why we find flat chamfer tools, the, the tip can't break off. But in this example, we're gonna, we're gonna go as if this chamfer tool is perfect just so I can show you exactly what's gonna happen here. And previously we talked about this chamfer clearance. Uh, now what I wanna do is put it into play. So I'm gonna specify, I'm gonna tell Fusion that I want 0.001, 1,007 inch of chamfer clearance. I do this a lot in the parts that I machine, but one thing you have to take in count is how much material left on the walls of the parts. So make sure that uh, you finish machining or you leave as much as what you left previously so this works out for you. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And there's my chamfer tool path for that particular edge. Now, if I put my mouse right there, Fusion's gonna show me they have a collision that'll go away here in a minute. We would see that I have exactly set the shoulder of the tool on the line that I want to machine. And so again, uh, because we're only simulating the one tool path, Fusion thinks we're crashing, but we're not. And we'll see that a little bit later on. If I look at this from the top, right now, I'm, instead of looking at the holder, I just want to look at the shaft. And when I do and I zoom in, what you'll see is Fusion stop the tool path 1,007 inch short of hitting the vertical wall therefore easily allowing me to chamfer that entire edge down there without having to do any math to figure out how much I have to back the tool off by in order to not run into the vertical wall. So there's a, there's a look at the magic 2D chamfer tool path in Fusion and how you can use it to debris your parts. So why would you want to do this? Now typically the machine is going to do a better deburring job than we're going to do by hand. Nobody likes to deburr parts by hand and uh, it can also cause things like repetitive stress disorders if you're constantly debris parts and things that work. So if we can make the machine do this, it's going to be faster, more consistent, and it's going to get you out of a job that you don't want to do anyway. So that's, uh, that's the 2D chamfer option. Like I said, though, I probably wouldn't quite go down quite so far. And so on the passes tab, I'm going to set my chamfer uh, tip offset to be 0 0.095, give myself a little bit of a buffer. I'll hit OK and let that recalculate. I'm going to simulate this tool path. And then now we can look at this from the front. And you can see I've given myself a little bit of a buffer room. And I'm still cutting very close to that shoulder of the, of the tool. Still allowing me to get pretty close to the very end of the line. But you can see I'm backed off a little bit from where I was previously. So if you guys found that helpful, um, definitely take advantage of this 2D uh, chamfer tool path. 
in situations like this, it'll save yourself a lot of time and it'll make your parts look uh, more professional at the same time. So as always, thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed it.